Making the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Quick look at AEW. Death Triangle uh, beat Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta, and Orange Cassidy in a trios title match. Well, uh, well, Pac tried to use that hammer again. This bloke needs to learn his lesson, dude. Cost him the cost him the title, cost him that uh, All Atlantic title. But he tried to use it, didn't work. Best friends won, and then Phoenix and Pac are in a kerfluffle afterwards over that hammer. So uh, looks like the uh, looks like this crew may not be long for the world as a trio. Oh no. We had Tony Storm beating Hikaru Shida to retain the AW Women's Title. It was a pretty good match. And then afterwards, Jamie Hayter, a rebel, hit the ring. Britt Baker runs down. Soraya's music hits. She comes down and uh, she's cleared. They had a brawl. Tackles, bumps, beating on each other. And then who should run down and make their return? from their uh, long-term visa issues, but Riho! And she's there in a dress. She looks like 55 pounds. And she's doing these giant dives off the post and wiping people out. So she is back. We had a FTR interview where, finally, they want the AEW Tag Team titles, and they ain't waiting no more. But then up comes Swerve in Our Glory. They believe they're the number one contenders. And so next week... It is FTR versus Swerve in Our Glory. The winners will be getting a shot at the AW Tag Team titles at the upcoming pay-per-view. We had a segment with Jay Lethal, Sanjay, and Darby. It's like a WWE segment. It opens up with Alex Marvez going, You guys are uh, allowed to have this interview segment, but absolutely no physicality. So 10 seconds later, they're just brawling all over the place, beating the crap out of each other. They drop a door on Darby, and then Darby's stuck underneath this bay door. So Jay Lethal runs out and around the other side and puts him in a figure four as he's trapped. Under- that, was my, that was my favorite beating so far this year. <laughs> so they're going to have a match at some point down the road. We had a William Regal MJF segment, which I cannot do justice to. If you want the entire recap, I'm running a video show tomorrow night. But essentially, MJF once got a tryout with WWE. He did very well, but Regal told him he was too young. And then Regal did say, just keep training, sending me matches and promos. And when you're old enough, I will get you a job. And MJF did until one day Regal sent him an email that essentially said, we're looking for athletes, you know, the NIL stuff. It wasn't the NIL stuff at the time, but essentially when they were just looking for athletes and they didn't really, they weren't so much into uh, indie guys. And uh, and he kept that email. That email, he said, made me want to kill myself. But uh, he kept it, and it has motivated him. And Regal's getting booed out of the building at this point. And then Regal grabs the mic and he says, you know, I, I started at 16 in carnivals with grown men beating the hell out of me. And I went to bed bleeding all over my sheets. And... If it was an email that made you want to quit, brother, you had this easy. And he says, if you want to be the devil like me, what you need to do is is stop taking shortcuts. So I'm going to turn my back, you get that ring, and you knock me out. And MGF can't do it, and he walks off. I'll talk more about this when we get to the main segment. So it was awesome. This probably was the greatest promo MGF has ever cut, which is really saying something. So we had uh, the Acclaimed and Billy Gunn. They're already doing the match against Woods and Nice on Friday. If they win, they can scissor again. If not, they lose their their tag team titles. That would be a swerve now, wouldn't it? Stupid Sterling. We had a Brian Danielson, Wheeler, Utah promo where Danielson's still putting over over Daniel Garcia, and Wheeler, he's finally had enough. And he's like, brother, everybody saw this coming except you. I saw it coming. Claudio saw it. We all saw it coming. I, I can't believe you were so blinded. And I shouldn't have bet my hero because I was disappointed. And he walks off. The story's got a long way to go, everybody. If you haven't figured it out already. Jericho beat Dalton Castle. Man, I love me some Dalton Castle. This was a fun match. And Dalton's just pounding on him at the end. He's pounding on him. And all of a sudden, there's like a duck under something. And Jericho spun around. It was like he was the Tasmanian devil. He did the fastest spinning back elbow, and then he hits the worked back elbow, 
but then falls down and looks like he elbowed the guy right in the face on the way down. <laughs> so Dalton's dead. He's pinned. And then Jericho goes to... Uh, this was actually the most amazing thing I think I saw in the entire show. He goes to beat up Ian Riccoboni. And as God is my witness, I didn't know that guy could frown. I have never, not once in my lifetime... Seen Ian Riccoboni with anything except the biggest smile it's, it's on true. the earth. And he was scared. I couldn't believe it. I thought they had a stand-in. <laughs> but he was saved by uh, Jerry Lynn. And then Jericho gave Jerry Lynn the safest tombstone you ever saw on the stage, thank God, because he has a bad neck, and uh, left him for dead. So you know, another first, strong heat segment. First time I met Ian, just actually up at Ring of Honor, the training center they had up there, and he wasn't even hired by them yet. He was just doing some tryout stuff. It's when Future of Honor was becoming a thing. And walking through everywhere, just the biggest smile you'd ever want to see. He's always in a good mood. And go figure, a terrible, terrible heel in person like Chris Jericho would try to do something to a man like that, especially after what he did to Bobby Cruz. My God, Bobby Cruz has grown. He's got older kids, surely. Ian riccoboni has got young kids, Chris Jericho. You sick man. Freak. Jade Cargill does a promo. She wants her TBS title back. She threatens Tony Khan. If you don't have Nyla bring my TBS title back on Friday, I will hijack that show for the entire 60 minutes. And here's a lineup for, uh, for Rampage. It's the acclaimed versus the varsity athletes. Willow Nightingale, Penelope Ford. Roosh versus 10. And Hook defending the FTW title against Ari Daivari. So I, I presume we're going to have all those matches. But let me tell you something, everybody. If Jade Cargill came out at the beginning of that show and Nyla Rose didn't show up <laughs> and she literally sat in a chair in the middle of the ring for one hour, I bet you anything that it is not close to the least watched rampage that they've ran in that time slot i don't recommend doing it ever again but i mean you know they've they've actually done things where you can put a test pattern i'm not saying that she's a test pattern but you know back in the day when they had test patterns when when the station went dark for the night like they would put test patterns on the screen and they'd do big numbers you know, yeah, people but, fall asleep. It's an actual rating. Well, I mean, technically, it's being on. I think people on. would be so intrigued by my God. She's now been sitting there for 22 minutes. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> got to come out, right? Because you know what, everybody, especially if the show's live. Like I said yesterday, more people tuned in to see if Bray Wyatt might show up. Then tuned in when he was advertised. Okay? So again, I don't recommend doing this regularly. And if they did it Friday, I would tell them never, ever to do it again. But I would bet nobody would ever forget that show. It would be a memorable show. Like, people in 50 years would go, remember that show where Jade came out and sat in the ring for one hour and Nyla never showed up? Do you remember that? I mean, and yeah, this guy's got an idea. Like, you know... Every 10 minutes, send out some security. She kills him. Like, she oh, killed yeah. him last week. That was great TV. <laughs> then she sits for 10 more minutes. Then Tony sends out some other guy. She brutalizes him. Sits in the chair for 10 more minutes. I mean... Hey, he looked better than Bob Backlund doing that step test challenge he did for an hour on WWF TV way, way back in the day. So, yeah, I think that Jade Cargill is sitting there. Just sitting there would probably... There are far worse things in the world than to look at Jade Cargill split screen for an hour. And then the main event was the Hangman Page match with John Moxley. And it was just, just getting going. I mean, it have been going for a while, but, you know, the, they always do the big near falls and high spots, and they're in Cincinnati, so he's going to make his comeback, Moxley, and the injury occurs. And so, as noted, they stop the match, and there's a long period of nothing happening, and and uh, they go over the card for Rampage and Dynamite again. And then they go back in the ring, and, and Moxley's cutting a, a quite bleeped promo on my feed. And he basically says, we got some time left, so MGF, get your ass out here right now. So MGF comes out with the chip. So they haven't told us, but it has now been made clear. This guy can cash in at any time. So he gets in the ring. They tease a cash in. But then he gets out of the ring. And he cuts a promo. 
and he says, I want you at 100%, no excuses. I am cashing in at full gear. He's doing the John Cena, who was a babyface, by the way. I want you at 100%, and William Regal, I want you to listen to this. For the first time in my career, I'm going to earn it. Now, you know, old uh, Dagan wants his money because uh, he got cheered on this show. And, hey, listen, if you want if you want 60 bucks, I mean, I'll give it to you. But, uh, you know, let's do it. Let's do it right, Dagan. This guy came out and he was booed out of the building. Why did he get cheered? Because he cut the biggest babyface promo of his lifetime. Probably even bigger than the one about his, his upbringing. Because, you know, the upbringing one was a very serious promo, and he was a super babyface when it was over. But, you know, it's a story about his life. And this promo was about something that every wrestling fan knows about. And every wrestling fan has been, you know, they've, they've followed all the news. They know about guys that didn't get a chance that were very talented. They've, they've been watching WWE for years, etc. So he cut a babyface promo. And at the end of the show here, do not mistake this. This was 100% a babyface promo. And I loved it because we've got a show coming up. And this guy, he barely has to try and he gets cheered. They did not do the deal before the show, I don't think, where he cut a heel promo to get booed. So there's one of two things happening right here. Either they finally just gone, all right, it ain't going to work. This guy's going full babyface, and he's going to do it right at full gear and win and become one of the top babyfaces in the company. Or, or he's going to claim that he's going to do it right, and then he's not. Man, he's going to go 100% full heel and screw John Moxley and screw the fans and be a massive heel. And you know what? I don't know which way they're going to go. But this is very much like some of the recent Jericho stuff. It's like, I don't know which way they're going to go. Either one, you can make work in storyline that finally he's just he's not going to fight the fans anymore. He's just going to he's going to do the right thing. And we're going to see full babyface MJF for a while. Or he's working everybody. And he's going to get us in the end. We'll see which way they go. I'll tell you what, no matter if it happens sooner or later, at some point, no matter which side of the ledger they are both on, we are going to see William Regal stand next to MJF. At some point down the line, we are going to see them together. They're too perfect together. Right now, MJF. He's like 1983, 84 Ric Flair. If you want him to be a baby face, no problem. You want him to be a heel, no problem. But as long as he can continue to be that habitual line stepper, bringing real emotion into things, bringing real life into things, and making it work for him, doesn't matter. It's just the fact that he's going to get a reaction. He's the biggest thing going right now in that company, hands down, and the, one of the best things in all of professional wrestling, easy. What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you when you irritate me, you make me mad. I I guess seeing seeing you guys. When you needle me, quit yeah. talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks, could leave only one thing in her will for Brian, <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Rufus versus Roman Reigns, 2016. Rufus Rufus on. Barricade. Rufus comes back, drops reins on the top rope. <laughs> Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb that they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, forget it. about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.